Now this brings us to our next case. This is the uh, corner of uh, Catherine and Water Street. Uh, Catherine Water Street is today basically a housing project on the, on the east side, all the way down by the water. Of course, why it's called Water Street is so close to the water. And um, it was there that they had the, uh, the East River Hotel. The East River Hotel, uh, what happened was in 1891, uh, the police were called to the uh, East River Hotel because they found a woman uh, killed inside one of the rooms. And it was horrific. It was absolutely terrible. There was blood everywhere. It was one of the most horrific, according to the police, one of the most horrific scenes that they had ever, ever witnessed. By 1891, we, we really had a more uniform police in New York City, a more professional police, a more you know, trained police. Still very corrupt and still very, you know, not as like what we have nowadays, but they were still better than what they were back in the 19, 1840s and 1850s. This is the uh, East River Hotel, what it looked like back then. And it was basically a, a hot sheet hotel. It was basically a hotel that was, that was used for prostitution. And the woman on the second floor, the one that was, uh, that was horribly murdered, was a young lady by the name of, uh, of Carrie Brown. Now, Carrie Brown wasn't her real name. Her real name was, was uh, Caroline Montgomery. And she lived at 49 Olive Street, Oliver Street, but she came to uh, the East River Hotel because she worked as a prostitute and she was also what they called slumming. It wasn't unusual for middle class uh, people to go to the Lower East Side and, and hang out with the, with the people in that neighborhood and like that. And uh, the, the, uh, so they call the police and the police come to the scene and uh, one of the things that they find is the, the place is covered in blood. The, uh, uh, and they, Oh, I'm sorry, let me just back up a little bit. They called the police, and the police were up on Mulberry Street. That was the original headquarters of the New York City Police Department. And one of the people that they called out was Inspector Burns. Now, Inspector Burns was kind of a legendary uh, character in the New York City Police Department because he was the one who was credited who were really, you know, inventing the whole detective division in the, in the police department, charging young, young detectives, aggressive detectives to do real investigative work. And in, in 1888, uh, when the... Uh, when the Jack the Ripper murders were happening in London's East End in the Whitechapel District, it was he who actually said, well, if we ever had a Jack the Ripper here in New York City, I would have solved this case within one to two days and 24 to 48 hours. Well, what happened was in 1891, when this crime happened, all the newspapers held him to it. You know, guys like Jacob Rees said, okay, tough guy, you know, let, let's see, let's see you solve this case. Yeah. And he actually went out and he actually interrogated a lot of people. Unfortunately, the way uh, Thomas Burns that's Thomas Burns right there. The way Thomas Burns would investigate, was interrogate people, was, was, would give him what was called the third degree. That's an example of, of what kind of a, yeah, yeah. And the reason, but people always ask, where does the term third degree come from? It's actually a play on Thomas Burns' name, because it was, it was a third degree Burns, get it? Yeah, really. And that's way, and what he would literally do is, he would have two detectives hold the guy, and they would actually punch the person. You know, in the abdomen and, and, and in the genital area, so they wouldn't leave any marks. Yeah, and, and until you confessed, you know, and then you had your perpetrator. So what happened was, uh, Thomas Burns uh, sends out his men, and they find out that one of the last persons to see uh, Carrie Brown alive was a guy named Frenchie. That's all they had was a nickname. And it turned out there really was a Frenchie. It was a guy named uh, Amir Ben Ali. Amir Ben Ali was brought in. He was found in the, uh, in the area. And he said, yeah, I was one of the last people to, to be with her. I was having drinks with her at a bar. And, um, and he says, but I didn't kill her. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I know nothing about this. It has nothing to do with me. I didn't, uh, I didn't murder her. What happened was is uh, Thomas Burns, being a very corrupt police officer, being a very corrupt police official, what he did was he said uh, he had his guys go ahead and actually leave uh, bloodstains on the doorway to a room that was directly across from where Carrie Brown was found. Yeah. Unfortunately for him, Jacob Reese, the big newspaper man, found out about this and he said, listen, we were there uh, when this whole thing happened. The, uh, there was no blood on that doorway when, when we came there. Because it wasn't unusual back then for the, for the newspaper reporters to go to a crime scene and get there as, right after it happened and usually destroy evidence. But Jacob Reese was able to see that. He was able to see that there wasn't any blood on, on that doorway. And it was, it was really something that uh, Inspector Burns actually did to frame this guy. Yeah. It turns out also that uh, uh, Amir Ben Ali was actually found guilty for the murder. And he ended up spending 11 years in jail for that murder. Yeah. 
It wasn't until much later that, that people who took it upon themselves to show the corruption in the New York City Police Department, they said, this guy's totally corrupt. This is not, this is not what you think it was. And he was actually fired from the New York City Police Department. Of course, he was fired, but he had amassed by then a, a personal fortune of th over $300,000 uh, on a salary of $5,000 a year in the New York City Police Department. Yeah. Now, what I have here is some of those uh, autopsy photos from, the, uh, from this case. So if, it's, if you find it disturbing, you can look away. And like I said, I'll show them anyway. Well, I'm sorry, this is, that's <laughs> Carrie Brown. <laughs> No, what, what's, what's really interesting about this is that she was almost 60 years old when she was murdered, but she was still working as a prostitute. Yeah. That's one of the, uh, that's one of the uh, autopsy photos. The reason that people think that this was linked between the Jack the Ripper case in London and New York is because there was a very distinct similarity between the two, between the two cases, the fact that the, the, the victims were disemboweled, basically. That's one, that's one picture there. And that's another one there. See, there's a, there's a carved an X there in the back. Apparently, that was also one of the signature marks of Jack the Ripper, <coughs> leaving an X mark like that. And this last photo is also, this is an actual uh, autopsy photo from the Jack the Ripper case. So you see there are similarities between the two. <laughs>